Hi there, and welcome to this lovely course titled Introduction to Problem Solving. This is the first lecture, and as far as this lecture is concerned, we have the following objectives. Firstly, we'll get ourselves to be introduced to problem solving in the context of computing. We'll also look into the steps that are involved in problem solving with examples and Lastly, we'll provide problem sets and exercises to practice the art of problem solving. So to begin with, what is a problem? A problem is simply an unsatisfactory situation or a gap that has been found in an existing solution. So when we, have, when we are in a situation that we are not comfortable with and we have the urge to improve that, that kind of situation can be referred to as a problem. Or when we have a solution already, but we identify that there is still a loophole in this solution, there are something that I know right about the solution and it needs to be fixed in order to have a better solution. We can also refer to that as a problem. So problem usually arise the desire or the hodge to have an improvement on an existing condition or to block an existing loophole in an existing solution. So let's look at a problem with an example. So once upon a time, distance communication was only possible through the exchange of letters. So let's say Mr. A wants to communicate with Mr. B. Mr. A is in Castina and Mr. B is in Lagos. Mr. A needs to get a paper. He needs to write a letter, get an envelope, put the paper in the envelope, take it to the post office, and then from the post office, they get the letter to Lagos. Mr. B will come to the post office and then collect uh, or to the post office and then get his letter. So the, there's actually a problem with this situation because it's, it's not a very comfortable way of communicating compared to what we have right now. So imagine all the stress of uh, moving from one place to another, uh, writing a letter and all of that, all of the logistics involved just for a communication and if i told mr b also want to reply back to that message he has to do follow the same process that mr a follows so we can try to either we can outline this as one of the problem involved with this situation maybe the paper and envelope cause we need to get a paper we need to get an envelope so it is not free we need to pay for them right and then to end transportation costs. Mr. A has to transport himself to the post office and on um, dropping his later, he has to transport himself back home or wherever he wants to transport himself to. And Mr. B also have to do the same thing. So it also involves cost from both parties just to make a simple communication. And then the post office don't do that for free. You, are, you also have to pay some charges, stuff like that. And imagine the stress involved, the energy uh, that has been wasted just for a simple communication. So what do we mean by solving? Solving is simply trying to address an issue, trying to address a situation that is not satisfactory, trying to come about or bring about an improvement in an existing situation. So in essence, that is what solving is. So for example, the problem that we just outlined in the previous slide. So the first generation landline telecommunication system in some way solve that problem. So with the landline telecommunication system, I don't need to get a paper, I don't need to get an envelope, I don't need to transport myself to the post office. I simply dial the phone number of Mr. B from my landline and ring him, Mr. B picks the call, then we communicate, we laugh and exchange different kind of gesture. 
So it eliminates the paper and transport costs. It provides convenience for communication. So let us look at another problem from the perspective of a solution. When we have a solution and looking into a loophole in that solution. So even the first generation technology, which we've seen in the previous slide as a solution, we can also term it as a problem because of one or two loopholes that are involved with the first generation telecommunication system. So the first generation telecommunication system is just simply a landline telephone communication. It is stationed and it is not mobile. So whenever I need to communicate, I need to go to where the tele landline is to make my communication. So if I'm in the market and I need to communicate with Mr. B, I need to rush back home to communicate to him. So when there's an emergency and I'm in a, a very remote place, I can't make a communication. So I need to get on, go to where the landline is stationed to make my communication. So due to that, for that reason, that can be seen as a loophole in the first generation uh, communication system. So, and that can also be termed as a problem. And it is not comfortable. So, we can also try to address this. And this has been addressed. Actually, we are just trying to give an uh, example of what a problem is. So, and we can see over the year, we have the second generation mobile technology which was introduced, it, uh, it empowered people to communicate while they are mobile, thereby improving over the 1G, I can communicate anywhere, I can communicate in the toilet, I can communicate in the market, I can communicate in wherever I am, provided there is signal. So, and as time goes on, uh, uh, we get to see loophole in the 2G network, 3G come about, the 3G network also have an improved version. We have the 4G and now we have 5G. And due to this tel telecommunication system, the existing one, we can do a lot of things. So there is a lot of uh, communication uh, system that align on this uh, generation, this 5 generation and 4 generation network like uh, all the social networking hubs. So with the current status quo, I can communicate with whoever I want to communicate with. I, we can even make a video call. We can exchange different gesture. I can see someone in a very remote place, maybe a thousand miles away from me. So, and as time goes on, we'll still be identifying some loophole in the current situation and trying to address that. So in essence, that is problem solving for you. So is in the context of uh, computing, problem solving, we can simply define it as the art of studying a problem and also providing solution to a problem, as simple as that. We, we have a situation, we study it, and then we try to figure out how to make that situation better. That is what problem solving is all about. So the study of problem involves understanding it and being able to extract useful data and potential solution. So one of the essential parts of problem solving is try to understand a problem. Because if we don't understand a problem, then we can't provide a solution to that problem. We can't provide an accurate solution to that problem. We need to know what is the actual problem so that we can design the desired solution for that problem. And the essence of this problem solving course is to provide you with the basic reasoning and analytical skills for it to understand a problem and also to provide a solution to that problem. So what are the problem solving process? Here are the steps involved in solving a problem. Firstly, we need to identify a problem. Does the problem actually exist or is it just an illusion? We need to know that, okay, if this is a problem, we need to identify it. We need to figure out, okay, what is this problem? 
try to understand the problem. After understanding the problem, then we analyze the problem. So analyzing means we try to extract useful information from this problem. We try to know what are the inputs of the solution we are to design for this problem. What are the outputs of the solution to be designed for this problem? What's, how are we going to structure the solution of the problem in essence? Thereafter, then we develop an algorithm to solve this problem. Algorithm is simply the step-by-step -step process, the step-by-step -step method that we need to follow in order to solve a problem. It's simply just like a manual to solve a problem. Thereafter, we use our algorithm to guide us in implementing the uh, problem by programming. So programming is simply the process of translating our algorithm to a program. So when the problem of long distance communication was identified, an algorithm was uh, uh, came about, we came about an algorithm and then that algorithm was used to implement the first generation telecommunication system. And as time goes on, we have the second, third, fourth, fifth like that. And we can only use algorithm to try to implement or refine those solution. And then lastly is the testing and debugging. So testing, after we have a solution to our problem, we need to test the solution. Is it okay for human consumption? Is it okay in the sense that is it very accurate? Does it provide the uh, accurate result that is needed? Uh, does it not have any harm or anything whatsoever that shouldn't, that makes the solution abnormal? So we need to make sure our solution is intact and then we also need to debug it to make sure that there is no any bug or error in the solution. And it is okay for human to start making use of our solution. So let's look at an example of a problem statement. And we try to understand this problem statement and then we also try to analyze and then um, analyze the problem. So in this problem statement, there's a country with the name Rigby. They are currently experiencing a virus which is called Joker. The country has three states. We have the North Rigby, East and South Rigby. And there are health center which are distributed across this country. But fortunately, some victim of this virus, they die, some survive. The development of record keeping has not reached Rigby. So in that country, they don't have a information system that they can use to keep track of the statistic of what is happening. So usually the information about L situation regarding the Joker virus usually come from one or two hearsay. Maybe this person, person A, might say five people die of Joker virus today, 10 people survive, 15 are still on admission. Person B might come and say, no, that's a lie. 15 people die today, 10 people survive, five are on, under admission. Stuff like that. So person C can also have different story. So there is no accurate information in, entire, in its entirety. So the accuracy of information, in, for this reason, the accuracy of information such as the number of victims, patient on admission, discharge, or die is questionable. And there's a need for an accurate information in order for the general public to know the current health situation and also for the government to make better informed decisions. So with an accurate information this system, the government can make better decision as to 
uh, patients actually uh, is the situation improving or is getting worse in order to know the proper measure to be taken to curb the problem. So firstly, we've just gone through the problem statement, uh, just like we are supposed to. And now we need to identify the problem. I think the problem is very straightforward, right from what we've already read. We've already read the problem statement. And from there, we can say the problem is actually an inaccurate information system. The information system is not accurate at all because they get information from different ARC. And what is the existing situation? So the existing status quo is different fashion of hearsay said different kind of thing. Mr. A say this, Mr. B say this, Mr. D say that, and whatsoever. Now that we've identified the problem, we know the problem on ground. So we need to analyze this problem to know what, how we can solve, how we can come about with a solution to the problem. We need to know what are our necessary inputs and we also need to know what are our output. So we need to have a second we look at the problem statement. If you want to have a second we look, you can try and pause the video and rewind back to the problem statement. Uh, if not, we can try to think of how we can analyze this problem. So analyzing involves us trying to figure out or trying to extract some information from the problem statement, trying to know what are the inputs and what is the output of our solution. So from what we have read from the problem statement, it seems that our input will involve knowing the number of states in that country. We need to know. We also need to know patients or we need to know the victims that have that virus. We need to know the victims, number of states, which is three, right? So we need to know victims that have that virus, like the one on admissions, the victims that died, and the victim that has been discharged. And thereafter, we think about what the output of our solution will look like. So our output will simply be an aggregate of these statistics. If we know the number of victims on admission, we need to know the number of victims on admission in these three states and have an aggregate of that as the total number of victims. We also know the number of victims that have died, the total number and also the total that has been discharged and that will be our accurate statistics. So thereafter, we will develop an algorithm for this. Um, in our second lecture, we'll be talking about algorithm development. So as far as this lecture is concerned, we just need to know how to understand the problem and also how to analyze the problem. Then we all know after the algorithm, we need to try to translate our algorithm into a computer understandable format using our chosen programming language in order to have a solution to that problem. And then lastly, we test and debug our solution to make sure that our solution is intact. So let's look at problem statement two. The problem statement two is about a mobile network with the name Gizmo. They don't have a KYC system, know your customer system. So, and they need an information system that is capable of storing and retrieving phone number and the respective NIN number of every customer. Hence, conforming with the recent security regulation so maybe in in the country in that country they have a regulation that they need to know the identity of each uh, subscriber or customer for that mobile network so now we need to analyze this problem right 
we need to understand the problem. Can you try that on your own? You can pause this video and try to come up with something and compare it with what we have here. So firstly, we need to identify the problem. What is the problem here? It's pretty straightforward. Lack of information system. They don't have a KYC system. They don't have an information system that they can use to identify their customers. So what is the existing situation? There was no information system. So here is, this is a fresh problem that need a solution. It's not a solution that has a loophole that need to be refined. I hope the point is understood. So the next thing is we need to analyze this problem. So we need to read through, have a look at our problem statement and I think from our problem statement, the input for this is pretty straightforward. What is the input? Okay. Firstly, we need to know the phone number of our customer. I also need to know the NIN, that is the national identification number for each customer. So one might argue we need information like the customer name, customer gender, and all of that. So with the customer identification number, we can get all of this information. So we just need the customer phone number, and we also need the identification number. So even the biometric information of that customer, we can retrieve it from the national identification number. So, and the output will simply be a customer record that comprises of every customer phone number and national identification number. And then we can store record, we can retrieve any customer information from this record. So here's problem statement three. I would like you to give it a try, try to identify and analyze the problem. So it's about a trader called Elite Guru at not Rigby. So he attend to at least 90 customer every day and he does this manually. So every trans transaction, he tried to figure out maybe the customer change or the balance that a customer is supposed to give him and all of that manually. And the Elite Guru realized that the process is very cognitive intensive. And it is very time consumer, consuming for his customer and also for himself. So he decided to try a point of sale system that accepts item to be purchased. Quantity of that item, amount paid as input, and then display customer balance or deficit as output. So, so and here we have a table that has a list of items that has been sold at Allied Guru Shop. We have a cup of rice, we have hungry man size Indomie, and we have a bottle of palm oil. So you try to identify what is the problem here and try to figure out what are the inputs and outputs of our solution. Here's another problem statement it's about a water board at Rigby, South Rigby. So they need a program that gives 5% discount to customers that pay their rate bill early. Otherwise, normal rates apply. So the program is to display the discount if applicable and the amount due. So here they are trying to uh, give an incentive or compensate customers that are punctual at paying their bill. So by giving 5% discount, so I would like you to also give it a try to identify the problem and also analyze the problem. And here are some list of exercises that I'd like you to give it a try just to exercise your brain. So thank you very much for listening and have a great day.